Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Govinsky's Tutorials. Today I'm looking at the new update, it's March 2024, to Pure Upright and Pure Piano by E-Instruments. So Pure Piano is a sampled grand piano, Pure Upright a sampled upright piano, and this update adds sympathetic resonance. So that was something that was missing before, it's now there. In a few minutes I'll demo that and talk about how we can tweak some settings in the app to adjust how it sounds. I'll also just mention that this app is going to be on, an, on a sale price uh, to celebrate the update. It's going to be half price for a few weeks. It's coming out today, around the time that this uh, video comes out. So I'll put links and stuff in the um, pinned comment of this YouTube video. And you'll also find links there for giveaways um, to win a copy of Pure Piano or Pure Upright here on YouTube, on my Twitter, on my Instagram, and also on my Patreon. Um, I've got timestamps as well in this video, so you can scoot around, but I would recommend watching the whole way through. I want to say thanks as well, a big thanks to E-Instruments for sponsoring this video. I'll just clarify, by the way, that I only accept to do sponsored videos on apps that I actually like. So I've turned down far more offers for sponsored videos over the years than I've accepted. But it's great to see developers supporting YouTubers in this niche because it's so tiny and uh, we really need and deserve, I think, as well, that support. Um, so yeah, this is not going to be a very long video. I will, though, go through the whole UI. So if you don't know how to use this app or if you're not familiar with the features, these are all things that I'll look at in the video, but it won't be a very long video. It'll be maybe 15 or 20 minutes. I mean, I don't know. I always say that and it always goes over. So first, let's listen to a really beautiful demo of uh, Pure Piano in action. And I want to thank David Collette for suggesting the use of Chick Corea's Piano imp Improv to demo this. Now, I'm not going to play the whole track. I'm just going to use a bit of uh, MIDI. Uh, from that, and we're going to feed it into um, Pure Piano here. Uh, and this is a really good track to use for this, so I'm glad David suggested it, because it's got a very wide octave range. It's got um, lots of polyphony. I mean, you can just look at the MIDI there, you know. Uh, it's very dynamic as well in terms of velocity and so on. So it's a very useful bit of MIDI to hear what a piano app can sound like. So let's have a listen to that now. Enjoy the demo and then we'll continue with the tutorial after this.
So to talk now about this sympathetic resonance feature, I've turned up here now. I didn't have it turned up just now for that demo, but here now I've turned up the resonance value uh, in this section here. So I'm going to put it fully up and I'm sending MIDI from this sequence AU keys into that instance of Pure Piano. And I've got sustain down, so it's not playing sustained notes. And now I'm going to, that's a, that's a bird. Um, now I'm going to just briefly play that note. And you can see that it's not really that resonant, right? But now I'm going to press this note an octave below, right? And I'm pressing it, but you're not hearing anything because I'm pressing it at a very low velocity. So by default, any note at a velocity below 7 will not be played. You can adjust that in Pure Piano or Pure Upright. But I'm pressing it, and what that will do is, just like in a piano, if you press a key silently, it will remove the damper from the string. It'll lift the damper from the string. That will allow the string to vibrate when another string is struck which has some kind of uh, harmonic relation with the uh, silent string. And this will create more overtones and things like that. It creates a richer, more complex sound. So let me just play this, press this one silently so it's not struck, but it's still going to resonate. Okay, and now you can hear very clearly that resonance there. So this is no resonance, right? So I'm just striking this note. And now again, I will press this one, C4, silently. And striking that, and we can hear that resonance very clearly. So we could play, um, we could play a few notes silently. And the, the you know, the notes that we're holding silently, they will change the resonance of the notes that are played. Um, so, you know, if you're... It depends on the interval, right? How dissonant those overtones are going to be. So that can be really fun to play around with. Now, this doesn't only happen uh, when you're pressing strings silently. It's just that that's a way to hear it. The strings which will um, make each other vibrate will be strings that are either actually being played or are silent, but have the damper off. So here now I'm just playing a few notes and I've got sustain on. And there'll also be the sympathetic resonance, but it just won't be um, so easy to hear. And now I've just turned the sympathetic resonance down. Let's see if we can hear it. I'll just play through. Let's turn the resonance up. You hear now how that's much richer and more complex. And uh, obviously this will sound a little bit different in a pure upright. Let's just look at the settings for this. So this is down um, when we click on this and we click on this mixer icon here. Let's turn the resonance up. So let's just try that um, playing a silent string and then sounding a string. I'll take the sustain down. So I'll play a bunch of silent notes here. And now 
I'll turn the resonance all the way down and come back and again play some silent notes. And you can hear there now that it doesn't have the sympathetic resonance. So that's the sympathetic resonance feature. And in the app, um, if we look at the settings, we can set here um, under which velocity number the um, key will be silent. So here it's just set to seven, but you can raise that if you want. So it will be harder to play silent notes. So this is useful, um, you know, especially if you're using a MIDI keyboard and you don't have great velocity sensitivity, you may want to adjust this to make it easier to play silent notes. It's going to depend on your playing style and your keyboard. So let's look at some other aspects of the interface. Okay, so here we've got the main page, really, that you'll be looking at a lot of the time. That is the morph pad, where you can um, morph between different sounds. Let's have a listen to that. So let's just send that uh, MIDI in there again. Okay, so we can have it more like a pad sound and we can have it somewhere in between that and the more standard piano sound. Or here we've got something between a pad and a reverse. And so on and so on. love this one. Okay, so um, now we can also edit the position of these. So um, if we just grab this detune one, for example, you know, let's say that we want to be able to blend between percussive and detune rather than percussive and bright. Then we just drag this down here. And now detune is here and bright is here. Okay, so we can do that um, as in any way we like. And there's a preset system in the app as well where you can save all these. Anytime you save a preset, you know, all the settings in the app will be saved. Uh, so that's the morph pad section. Here, the FX. Um, if we look over on the right, we have a page for the EQ, reverb, and delay. If it's set on delay, we have synced or unsynced option up at the top. And for each of them, you can see that along the top, you can turn them on or off here. And you can select here whether they're controlled by the morph pad or not. Okay, so remember, this is the morph pad. So what this means really is that Let's say, for example, if um, the EQ is set up to be controlled by the morph pad, let me change between different morph points. So what we're seeing here is the EQ associated with this um, just you know, default patch, let's say. But if I drag this up to reverse and click on FX again, then now you can see here the um, EQ has been set up for this reverse patch with the lows rolled off. Okay, so if we drag that somewhere else, like down here to percussive, it probably has a different setting for EQ. Yeah, it's there like that. So if you want to just set up your own EQ curve that will um, uh, not be controlled by the morph pad and will just override whatever the settings for the EQR in different morph points, then you just turn this off. And so then you, you know, adjust the low um, mids and highs and so on like that. And then here, um, reverb, okay, we can turn off control by morph pad. And here we have reverb amount, uh, the time and the 
reverb damping. And then here we have the delay. So we turn off control by morph pad. And we can set the amount. So here it's synced. Or it's not synced. Let's turn on sync. So uh, here we're choosing time. Let's put it on sync there. So yeah, here set to quarter note, and then by raising the F circle, we're um, increasing the feedback amount. So it's a nice um, intuitive interface to adjust the sync time. We just drag left and right on that. And I'll just put each of these back to controlled by morph pad for now. So we go to the next page, Velocity Response. This is super useful. So let's just um, go back to Pure here. So we can um, limit how high velocity the notes will be allowed to go to. So we could make it that everything's going to be played very quietly. We could have everything kind of, you know, in the sort of mid-range. With no extremes. And we can change the curve. So here, it's going to be a lot of very high velocity notes. And here it's going to be mostly low velocity notes. And if you're playing yourself on your keyboard, you're going to have to um, hit very hard. You know, I, I was hitting my keyboard very hard just now. Extremely difficult to um, get loud notes there. So over on the right, um, there are a few kind of ready-made curves. So soft, um, this one, despite the name, Soft here actually means that even if you play softly, it will be quite loud. Hard means even if you, hard means that even if, or, well, if you want loudness, you're going to have to hit the keys pretty hard. So we can just easily change that with the curve. And here, fixed. And I can just take this one and, um, you know, we can manually adjust it any way, any way we like. So we'll put them back to linear. Then here, when we click on this, we have um, master tuning. We put this track back to the beginning. So if you're one of these people who's very fussy about, you know, what is that tuning that a lot of people rave about? Everything sounds better in 436 or whatever, or mystical powers and so on. You can change all that here. Bring the velocity down a little bit. Um, or you could change the tuning because you have to play with someone who's in a slightly different tuning from standard 440 hertz and then over here you can transpose everything it doesn't really sound good to do that while you're playing so you would set that up before and here you can change between equal temperament and stretched So generally, um, stretched might be nice for a richer sound when playing solo. Equal often recommended if you're playing along with other harmonic instruments. Then in settings, we can... Um, these, these are all things related to the polyphony, and I'll just leave you to read the details about those in the manual, but um, long story short, if you're 
iPad or your phone or whatever is not very powerful and you're having um, some difficulty playing something that, you know, it's causing your CPU to spike or something, then you could um, change it to minimum. But if you've got a powerful device and you want to play something with a lot of polyphony, lots of sustain and so on, you can put it up to max. Again, you can read the details of those in the manual. Don't want to make it too long. You can turn liquid morph on or off. So um, let's look at that one. So here, liquid morph is on. So here, if I um, morph, uh, even a sustained note um, will morph between those two. But if we change that and we turn liquid morph off, um, it will only actually apply to the next note that's played. I'd always keep that on. You can just turn sympathetic resonance on or off here, and you can adjust the silent key velocity as we discussed earlier. And yeah, those are really the main uh, settings. So I'll finish up there, everyone. Thanks to you for watching. Thanks to E Instruments for sponsoring this video. And do remember, everybody. If you enjoyed the video, it'd be great if you smash the like and write a comment and all that stuff. If you can support me on Patreon, even better. Got a great little community developing over there. Uh, link and so on is in the pinned comment as well. Okay, everyone, enjoy your day, evening, or whatever, depending on the time zone you're in. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. <laughs>